Mm -hmm. I know I'm getting emotional. I got no, tears. No, you're fine. All over. Look, you fine. Look, that's what the, that's what they need to see. I got they need tears. to see. Lord have mercy. Oh, <laughs> they man. need to see it. They need to see it. I got oh, cause it's like I'm still. Oh, Lord have mercy. Um, I called my friend, the one that told me to watch The Passion of Christ five years ago, and he like, whoa, Nick. He said, man, this stuff don't. Happen. So the third girl that I met, that's why I always say you I always tell dudes this. I don't know if it still applies now. I say you'll probably have three real people that run into your life that mm -hmm. you probably could consider your wife. Mm -hmm. Only three. I don't, the number is probably one or two now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> one or two. Unless that guy be like, all right, I'm going to grace you. Yeah. But um, I met a girl at 27. So main girl, I had other girls on the side, other girls that I was dating. And then God was revealing to me that I was in error in a lot of ways. So one time I had a dream, um, and I remember this vividly because I know most people don't believe in dreams, but I just proved mm -hmm. to them that why they should believe in dreams because I wrote this while I was 23 years old. Yeah. So I already know God. I, so that's one of the things. I'm like Joseph. Like God just revealed them, some things to me through dreams mm -hmm. for some strange reason. Me too. Yeah, but but when I was 20, 20 around 27 or maybe 27 28 but i'm gonna just say 27 i had a dream that i was in a nightclub mm. and i was going around talking to women and then it was this dude that was dating the women he pulled out his gun and he shot me mm. in the neck he shot me right here in the neck and then i fell down like in slow motion it felt so real because like i felt like in, i was going slow in my dream and then my soul came out my body and I'm trying to like hold it down. Like, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Like, don't go. And it just came out. Mm -hmm. And when I looked in the nightclub, I looked down and I see my body. And then I see my friends circling around my body. It's like, man, somebody shot Nick. Somebody shot Nick. Somebody shot. That's what they were saying in the club. And when I see my body, whew, I went up. Mm -hmm. And then I, I already knew where I went. God wasn't pleased. Mm -hmm. I said, God, please. I beg God. I said, God, please, please, please spare my life. Please. I won't do it again. I'm going to change. I'm going to change my life. I'm pleased. And then, and I'm, as I'm begging God throughout the whole dream, I open my eyes in real life and the sun is shining on my face mm -hmm. in real life. And I went, oh, I got up and I was shocked. Mm -hmm. So I called my, um, one of my club buddies and I said, hey, man, I just had this crazy dream. And he said, man, you tripping, man. That's just a dream. You tripping. I said, no, man. This stuff felt real. Like, I feel like something is going to happen to me. Like, God mm -hmm. is going to take me away. Mm -hmm. And he was like, nah, man, you tripping, man. You just going through a little phase right now. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I said, this stuff <laughs> felt so real. So what I told him, I said, you know what? I said, fellas, look, I love y'all and all. I said, but I ain't going to go to no club. I'm just chill at home. So what they would do, they would stop by the house. They're like, hey, man, Nick, you going to go out? I said, no, nah, I ain't going out. Mm -hmm. So that was week one. I said, I ain't going out. They said, man, Nick is going through a phase. He tripping. He doesn't have this crazy dream. Now he don't want to hang out with us no more. And then um, and then week two came around. Nick, you going to hang out? I said, no, nah, I ain't going out with y'all. I said, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I ain't hang out with them. So week three came about. I said, no, 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 I ain't going out. And then finally I gave in. I said, you know what? Maybe that just was a phase. Maybe it was just yeah, a dream. Yeah, maybe it was just a dream. It was all a dream. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up going out with them, and then I'm still 27, and then, you know, met this woman. And then I think that was around the same time that I met my third girlfriend. I know mm -hmm. I said I met this girl, but I wanted to share that before I say that. Mm -hmm. So I didn't go to the club for like three weeks. And when I finally went to the club... That's when I met this girl, the girl of my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> I, wa I was at the door. I seen this girl. I had on all white. And then I seen in the dance floor, this dude was trying to talk to her. And then my personality, I quickly jumped in front of him, whispered something in her ears. And she like, boy. You and know? who was that girl? <laughs> Who is that girl? <laughs> Your best friend. Your best friend. <laughs> so um, I started to talk to her. And then 
um, one thing led to another. She didn't like what I did because she felt like I was talking to every girl in the in the club. And I'm I was lost, y'all. So this is a person without God, right? And I'm not encouraging y'all to find y'all spouses in the nightclub. I'm not, not doing that either. Mm-hmm. But I'm just trying to show you that there there came consequences with that. Mm-hmm. So she took the initiative says that you know I'm interested in him and I was interested in her mm-hmm. and I really liked her. I'm mm-hmm. like, man, she cool. You know, she got a nice little vibe, a nice little kick. But at the same time, I had that that hood mentality like it's okay to have others on the side Mm -hmm. you don't you don't have to settle for one right and then so me and her we talked for a little bit and she was she was at the time younger her she was like i'm a woman woman i know what i want Mm -hmm. i'm not one of those other girls i know what i want and she's like what you gonna i'm like look i'm just trying to figure things out Mm -hmm. trying to go to school i don't know i'm just trying to figure things out and then we kicked it for a little while. Um, I loved her, luster, and then. But you still had some chicks on the side. I still had some chicks on the side. <laughs> I, I'm I'm helping some sisters out. Yeah. Some sisters listen to they be like, wow, like this dude went through that. That's how dudes think. That's how an ungodly man think. And so there's no conviction. Let, let, let me burst your bubble. Oh boy. Some of the brothers in the church, they think the same way. Well, if they're in the church, God would go and deal with them accordingly. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But sometimes we think it's just ungodly men. But it's some of the brothers in the church. Too. Oh, boy. So <laughs> and, but, and, and but, I'm, I'm just I'm just putting it out there. Yeah. So so men in the world don't feel like, oh, this brother's bashing us. Nah. It's it's a matter of the conviction, realizing that you are a man. You were created to be a husband. Husband, yes. Not to be a temple violator. <laughs> yes, I like right? that. You temple can't, violator. I like you that. You can't just be hopping from temple to temple and temple to temple. Mm. It's like you understand yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. You you have to get to the point where you understand. God created me first. Yes. I am man. Yes. Before God created this woman, he created me. Mm. He gave me life. He breathed Yahweh into me. Yes. Right? And then he takes from me a rib and fashions and forms her into this amazingly beautiful creature. And all I want to do is violate her body. Yes. Right? And it's not just men in the world. This mm. is brothers in the church. So wow. I'm sharing this as, as you're sharing is that everybody has work they have to do, especially us women. We have to get to the point where we number one heal because what, what need do we have to allow men to violate our temples? Yeah. Low self-esteem, like low that. self-worth, no value in mm. ourselves. Yeah. Because if you value who you are, who God says you are, you going to look at a man and say, hey, if you can't fight for me by literally getting yourself together and then coming back and saying, you know what? I want to marry you. Yes. yes. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Or you know what? I'm not the one for you, but I know somebody who was perfect for you. Yes. And you introduce them. Mm-hmm. So that that I wanted to make sure I put that out. No, there. no, that, I'm glad. Yeah, you pointed that out just to get people thinking like. And it goes to show you that a, a person got to have a love for Christ, a yeah. relationship yeah, to really understand. I like you said, you temple abuser, what you got? Temple Tem- violator. Temple violators. <laughs> Lord have mercy. But let me continue. Let me just say this, right? Um, so this third girl I met was very special to me because she reminded me of like love. Like, mm-hmm. Because I, I thought I never could have found love again. Like, mm. Even though I feel like, well, that's not actually love. I don't know. I'm, well, that's the you, way that I thought. Say, let me say this. You may have loved her, believe it or not. And the reason I'm saying is the way you're smiling when you go back to that point. Right. Right. It wasn't that it was just her body. It was something else. Yeah, that yeah, absolutely. Drew you to absolutely. Yeah. You understand? And your way of love, it was there. It wasn't just the lust factor. Right. It was something. Because I'm looking at you as you're talking about, <laughs> like, you went there. you like, yeah, I really. It yeah, wasn't just yeah. you thinking about sex. It was like, there was something special about this woman. Right, right. Go ahead. Continue. 
Yeah, so and uh, so let me let me say this. So on May twenty third, um, it was her birthday. It was Memorial Day weekend. I dated her for a while prior to that, and then we we we're both worldly, worldly individuals, no God. Mm-hmm. Um, but the one thing that that I want to add before I say what I'm about to say on May twenty third, she. I remember when she invited me to her house, she had a Bible. Mm, so she had a foundation. That Bible scared the devil out of me. And I was scared of the Bible. Mm. But I knew, like you said, she had a foundation. But me and her, we talked, digging her, like her conversation. and um, But also had others on the side. But I just couldn't break loose of that. How do you... How do you break something that you already established for all those years mm. without God in himself intervening, right? Yeah. So I remember on May 23rd, me and her, we had a, this huge argument. And we both were speaking French and mm. was going at it. I'll never forget this. May 23rd, 2009. And um, wow. Let, let me just say this before I say that day. Mm-hmm. Let me just say this. I just want people to see the hand of God. Mm-hmm. Um, while I was dating her, I knew I wanted to get my life together. Gotcha. Because that, that's the one thing that I used to always tell her. I got to get myself together. Mm-hmm. I don't like the thought that I'm living with my aunt. And then I signed up for school that month in May. Mm. While in school, it was this guy that walked up to me and he started talking to me about Jesus. Mm. And then he said, he really walked me through the path of Jesus. Mm. Like, I don't believe that. I, I don't think I've ever heard anybody talk like to me like that before about Jesus. Like the way he didn't like beat me down. Hey, you going to hell? Mm-hmm. He didn't say that. He spoke with grace. Hey, you know, there's a man that came because man is fallible. Mm. 100% man, 100% God. He died for you. He died for me. Anything that you're going through, he could do it for you too. Mm. He could deliver you. That right there ministered to me. Hence, what I said yesterday, discipleship. You ain't even realize that man introduced you to Jesus and not religion. Yeah. Yeah. He discipled you. Right. 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 Because God's already discipling you. And here it is. He sends this person to say, Hey, this is Jesus. He loves you. Yes. Yes. As a matter of fact, he loved you so much. He died for you. Yes. Right. Yes. So God is preparing you for the next phase. Yep. Right. And this person talks to you without taking a Bible and beating you over the nah, head and he saying, you that. even, you you this, you that. He said, no, this is Jesus. This is who Jesus is. He's long suffering. Yep. He's, he's jealous. He's kind. Yeah. He's merciful. He's peace. Yeah. Right. So when you understand that, ha. Huh, When you understand, oh, Jesus, Father, forgive me. When you understand that Jesus loves you that much, Mm. your life changes. Yes. When you understand that Jesus did all of that for you, Mm. there's no way, there's no way that Mm -hmm. you can continue in the life that you're on. Yeah. Uh, I, I wanted to mention that because... God has his servants everywhere and people like you and I that go and we tell people about Jesus and especially that might be listening to this. They might say that might probably be their sign mm-hmm. to draw closer to God, you yeah. know, because God has his people working everywhere, planting seeds, planting seeds. And I wanted to kind of like highlight that. And that's why I said I wanted my walk to highlight God, mm-hmm. not me. But God, this is what God did, right? Mm -hmm. Because like you said, we don't want to put God in a box, Mm -hmm. right? So this guy, he told me what he needed to tell me about Jesus. I went home that night, that evening. I went to the liquor store. (laughs) (laughs) I sat in the dark room 
And I started to drink. I said, God, I ain't right with you, God. I don't know what my life is. And I just started like chugging it down. And I'm like, I don't know, Lord. I just don't know. And I left it as that. But I was still in a relationship with my third girlfriend, the third girl that I ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, experiencing these things here and there. And then, boom, May 23rd happened. Mm. Because this happened around May 4th, May 4th, May 5th, that same year, 2009. In fact, that was five years from when I wrote that in my journal. Mm -hmm. So now I'm 28 years old Mm -hmm. in 2009. So I wrote in my journal 2005, 2004, and now two five years later, it's 2009. So mm-hmm. five years later, that's grace. Five that's grace. years later. God gave right? you grace. So, and on top of that, the fifth month, that's grace. Because mm-hmm. all this is happening in May. Mm-hmm. Fifth month, that's grace. So the God spoke, the God spoke to me in May about Jesus, like May 4th, May 5th. And on May 23rd, I get in this big argument with my girlfriend. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I lit her up and then my, one of my friends came over and then he was hanging around with me because it was Memorial Day weekend. You know what folks do in, in you know, sunny South Florida, Dade mm-hmm. County. Mm-hmm. They go to South Beach on mm-hmm. Memorial Day. Mm-hmm. So I told my friend, I said, man, you know, I don't feel like going out tonight. I said, it's just one of those nights. I don't feel like hanging out tonight. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, he and I, we're drinking, we're talking, we're calling the other women to see what they're up to. And my aunt was sitting on the couch and my aunt just gave me this weird look. She said, my nephew life is finished. Mm. That's what she said. She just looked at, she said, La vous fini. Yeah, that's what she said. And I looked at her <laughs> and I laughed. <laughs> I had to be, I had to be the Haitian yeah. one. La vous fini. When she said that, Adney, I laughed. Mm. I said, my auntie don't know what life is. Mm. She, I laughed at her. So what happened? So when I was with my friend and my auntie saying all this negative stuff about me, um, I ended up falling asleep. Mm. And um, yeah, this is the part that get me, right? Wow. You know, I still get emotional as I think about it. Mm-hmm. It was May 24th, um, 2009. Um, my brother, my older brother, um, I had a, I, I fell asleep uh, May 24, 2009. Mm-hmm. I fell asleep and uh, in my dream, my brother knocked on the door and uh, I opened it, I opened the door mm-hmm. and my brother was, told me, he said, Nick, God gave me the picture of the devil. Mm. And I said, what you mean he gave you the picture of the devil? He said, look, I got the picture right here. I could show it to you. And then I was looking at this picture that he was showing me, but it was 3D and it was moving. It was like a a black spirit moving inside of it. You could see the world. And then he was laughing. The devil, he said, yeah, the devil is laughing at everybody in the world because they're not obeying God. Mm. So as my brother is showing this to me in the dream, he's sharing, he's telling me this. I was like, no way, that's crazy. And then my brother, he said, Nick, if you want anything from God, you know you could ask him, right? And I said, well, I don't know how to contact God. I don't know. He said, well, here's the number and you could call God. Mm. And then he gave me the number. And then he, when he put the number in my hand, I looked at the number. And I said, I don't know, I don't know. I looked at the number. I said, you know what? I'm going to call it because I'm going to ask God anyway. So I called the number. And then when I called the number, it said, thank you for calling heaven. How may I help you? Mm. I said, what? She said, yeah, thank you for calling heaven. How may I help you? And immediately when I spoke, I was in my living room space in my living room where my brother gave me um, mm-hmm. the phone number. Immediately, my body, spirit, soul went straight up. Wow. And then mm. when I'm in this place, I remember after opening my mouth, it was a place was all white. It was all white. Mercy. 
And I remember being in this place in my dream that's all white. I remember looking down because the presence was so pure. I, was, I, I looked down and then it was a voice like thunder. Mercy. He called me by my full name. He said, Nixon. He said, my last name mm. is Vane. What do you want? Mm. And I started crying before him. I said, Father, I want money. <laughs> <laughs> he said, no. He said, no. He said, I could give you anything in this world, but you must first obey my son, Jesus. Mercy. I tell you, this, this, this happened many years ago, and I still get emotional. And God, the Father, with his thunderous voice, told me, Nixon, whatever you want, I could give it to you. He said, if you want a family, I'll give it to you. If you want a career, I could give it to you. He said, Nick, I could give you anything you want. Just obey my son. He said, but when you obey my son, what I want you to do, the first thing I want you to do, obey my son. And you need to go tell your family about me. Mm. After you tell your family, go tell the world. And um, I said, I said, Father, I'm going to do that. Amen. I told I told God I said I said that's what I'm gonna do God I said that's what I'm gonna do and he said okay now go back and I was in a place that was all white and it shot back down in the living room my body shot back down in the living room and then my brother was there my older brother my cousin was there my little sister was there in my dream and I said hey y'all God just spoke to me he told me to tell y'all to obey his son, Jesus. But he want, he said he's going to bless us. I'm telling them that. I said, they look, all them looking at me like crazy. I said, in the dream? This was in the dream. I said, look, because he, he told me everything that he's going to do for us and the family. And then, and then my sister in my dream was texting. And I say, sis, you got to listen to me. You're getting distracted. Because mm. she was like this little girl just texting. And then my, 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 one of my cousins had two bags of money. He said, man, I ain't trying to hear about that. And he left the house. Mm. And then my older brother's like, come on, man, Nick, man. Come on, like, really? And then when I and I looked at my family and I said, look, I don't know about y'all, but I'm changing my life. Amen. I'm changing my life. So I kept saying that in my dream. And I woke up in real life saying that I'm going to change, change my, my life. life. I'm going to change. And then my cousin in real life was sleeping on a couch. I'm like, dude. You know you was talking to your sleep last night, right? And I said, for real? Mm -hmm. I broke down. I said, I said, you don't know what just happened to me, man. God spoke to me. Mm -hmm. And then that's why I started to tell him about the dream. You're like, whoa, Nick, that's crazy. And I remember I had to get up early that morning to go take a shower for work. And I'm thinking like, God, who, who do I go to? Like, where do I, I find I, I your don't son? know who. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where to go, which direction to go. I'm just, I know you told me to do this, but where do I start? So the one guy that, that told me that I read earlier about watching the Passion of Christ, I reached out to him. Mm -hmm. I know I'm getting emotional. I got no, tears all No, you're fine. Over. Look, you're fine. Look, that's what, the, that's what they need to over. see. I they need to tears. see. Lord <laughs> have mercy. Oh, <laughs> they man. need to see it. They need to see it. I got, oh, because it's like, I'm still, oh, Lord have mercy. Um, I called my friend. The one that told me to watch The Passion of Christ five years ago. And he like, whoa, Nick. He said, man, this stuff don't happen all the time like that. Mm -hmm. What? He said, the father spoke to you? And I told him everything in detail like I just told you. He said, wow, Nick. He like blown away what I told him. Because imagine hearing it in real time that it just happened. Mm -hmm. And then I was so shocked when I went to work. That was I was on my mind. And then so when I got off from work, I called my girlfriend because that May 23rd, me and her had a huge argument. So the 24th, I called my girlfriend and I told her, hey, um, I'm going to change my life. Mm -hmm. And she said, boy, stop playing. Like she like, dude, you just argued with me last night. So mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're going to change your life now. I said, no, like 
something serious just happened to me mm-hmm. and I'm, 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 I got to change my life. And, and again, I was still searching. I didn't know which direction to go. Um, I, I started looking for churches on my own. I didn't know who to go to. I went to a, a Christian bookstore. I bought me a study Bible. I bought the wrong one. <laughs> I, Lord, yeah. no study Bibles. Go ahead. I went to, I bought a study Bible and then, and I always kept in touch with a sister and she's enough. She's been in the body of Christ for many, many years. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sister Prince, Mm -hmm. Katia Prince, praise God. She just got married. Glory to God. Glory to God. May God bless her marriage, her union. Mm -hmm. But Katia been in the church like like years before my salvation. In some way, somehow, I was led to reach out to her. And then what I just shared on this episode, the experience that I had, um, you know, she ended up inviting me over. And then she started to talk to me about the love of Christ. Mm Mm-hmm. And I told her my experience. She's like, wow, Nick, wow. And I said, look, I don't have a church home. I'm I'm still trying to figure this stuff out because mm-hmm. what happened to me is not normal. It's not. And I'm like, I'm still trying to figure this stuff out. And she said, well, Nick, um, I go to this church. You know, she's at Pembroke. Yeah. She said, I go to this church, Church of Christ. And if you want, you could check it out. Could be, you could be my visitor. And I said, OK, um, I'll check it out. But I, I still didn't go because mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, I'm like, I'm still trying. It, it's I, I'm still shocked that the father spoke to you. He spoke to me. I'm shocked. I'm still like at disarray. My family don't know what's going on with me. They think I'm losing. I'm going crazy. I'm like, this is not normal. I, who can explain this stuff to me? Mm. And then so my girlfriend, you know, me and her reconciled from the 23rd. And then so me and her meeting up again, and I'm like, I don't think what we're doing, we can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, the fornication, because because God was really doing a thing with me. And I'm like, he's trying to mold me and break me down to put me back together. And I'm like, we can't be doing those things together anymore. Mm. And then I remember one time spending time with my girl while I'm going through this whole transition. And then she said she looked at me like this. Since you're trying to change your life. Have you ever cheated on me? I said. You would ask me that question. I said, I know this. She did. I said, what kind of. (laughs) (laughs) Adney. You looked her in her eyes. I looked her in her eyes. And then I looked down. I said, yeah, I cheated on you. I, I wasn't a man. This and that. I just was being a mom. She said, oh, how could you? How did you find time? How did you? This and that. I said, I'm sorry. I'm Mm. sorry. I'm I'm so sorry. God is working on me. I'm sorry. And then she didn't talk to me. So she ended up breaking breaking it off. She didn't talk to me for three weeks. And that's when really God really had his hand on me. Mm. So at this at this point, I'm like, okay, I got to start. Start. I'm still trying to figure things out. And, and and I'm sorry, that's when Katya came in the picture. Mm-hmm. Sister Prince came in the picture because this is where I confessed and all this stuff is coming at me. I'm trying to figure it out. And then uh, my girl at the time then talked to me. And then I said, you know what? Um, I got to figure this thing out. Then Katya came in. And I remember one time sleeping at, in my bedroom and I left my TV on. And then while I'm sleeping, I got up in the mid, like in the, in the morning. Yeah, because he used to come on about what, yeah. six in the morning, I think. It was. Yeah, I woke up in the morning. The TV was on. I woke up in the morning. I hear Brother Daniels preaching, young Brother Daniels. Mm-hmm. I look. I said, and I look, and I'm like, wait a minute, that's the church that Katia, Katia want me to go to. Mm-hmm. And that's when it started. To, I started to connect the dots because I'm still trying to. I'm still looking for a church. I'm still trying to figure this out. Trying to do this thing on my own. But God was already putting things in together for me. Mm-hmm. So when and then I, I like, wait a minute. God, you want me to go there? Mm-hmm. And that's when I said, you know what? I'm going there. Mm-hmm. Got my study Bible. I went to I went to church. The first week I went there, I sat all the way in the back, greeted Katya because Katya was the greeter. Greater. I greeted her, went in, sat to the back. It was a great word. The preacher's like, somebody in here need to give, they give their and life to the Lord. Give your life I'm like this in the chair. <laughs> <laughs> <Like this. laughs> 
<laughs> Before I go any further, what could preachers do to brothers that was like me, that's straight out the world and that don't want to go up the first week? Okay, so this is the thing that I'm learning. Uh-huh. You may know that there's a soul there that needs to come up. Mm-hmm. After your sermon, you got to go and invite the brothers out and have a conversation with them and disciple them. What about they take off? That's why you that's why your greeters is at the door. That's why one of the reasons. Let me tell you something. This is mm. why I love Alvin L. Daniels Jr. Right after he preaches. He don't stay inside. Yeah, yeah. He's at that door. Yeah. Right. So if you trying to sneak out, he already beat you to the door. Yeah. So that way he has he's shaking your he's shaking your hand. Right. He's talking to you. He's letting you know I'm here. Right. So preachers need to be more more personable. Yeah. Because the thing about it is people in the world look at preachers. They automatically have this notion that, oh, he's after God in Jesus, it's him. Right. And right. they fail to understand that he's a man just like you. Yes. yes. If, if preachers would stand at that door and greet mm. that non-member and show him, I'm a man just like you. The only difference between you and I is this suit. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And you start that relationship mm. and you start, talking to them about Jesus and even share your story as how you came to Christ. It yeah. makes it easier because then this man, especially because the church has been feminized. Mm. A lot of men are not coming to church. Who's in the church? When you think about it, yes, when you go to yeah. worship service on Sunday, who's there? A whole bunch of females, maybe five or 10 men yeah. because their wives are there. Mm. Right. The church has been extremely feminized. It's time for us to start doing the work to show people. This is yeah. This That's is why I'm truly... helping the brothers out. You know, we got a series coming out where yeah. we're talking about men and try to edify them and yeah, and instill in them about and teach their them God, about the, their the... God given purpose. Exactly. Because most men don't know that. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why you know when I share my story, it, I didn't have a man to teach me about manhood exactly about being a leader about being a priest a provider and protector i didn't have that yeah so you know coming up with you know broken home single mom single aunt and you don't have an in no structure mm -hmm. so a lot of our communities are like that you know yep. so that's like man you you it's just the streets raise you the streets tell you to do things that are contrary to god's word yeah <laughs> again i'm about to flip that even those who grew up in the house with the father if the father is not there doing the fatherly thing yeah does it really help that the father is in the house mm. if he's not active yeah let's take it to the church a lot of ministers yeah they're doing the work of the lord i commend you but if you're not there the way that right. you need to be when your child strays can you really blame them because daddy, I love you, but you was there for everybody else but me. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, preachers, leaders, um, we got to find these creative ways to spend that time. Because I was once told many times, not once, that um, your, first... Your, your first church is your home. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's where it has to be. There got to be a level degree of balance and even boundaries. Yeah. And that we probably, we're going to talk about that part. Yeah. But let me continue. Um, so... And going back to your point, so when I went to the church the first time, I ran out of that church. Mm -hmm. Devil didn't like. But who that. who who was who who was there waiting for you though? Katya, Sister Prince. But but still, I it's like I knew I knew that I had to be there, but at the same time, you were I, battling. Yeah, that's the thing. It yeah. was a war. It was a war because it's like the devil. See, the devil gives you things. But the, God give you things as well. God give you peace, joy, love, happiness. Mm -hmm. The de the devil's like, hey, I could give you, man. Look, you His can stuff have all is of temporary. this. You can have all of this, yeah. And I didn't share the part where God really got my attention because there's a point that I got real sick. Mm -hmm. I didn't share that part even before I got to the church. So the devil knew that I was gonna make a transition, and I was on a verge. I went to a hospital, Adney, and I ended up getting real, real sick. And then that's when I asked God. I said, God. You spoke to me. I said, what do you want from me? 
He wanted I, your I life. I didn't share that part. Mm -hmm. That was when I was going through my whole three week thing, and it was a dude that sent me a text, and he was like, "Give your life to Jesus Christ." I ain't hear from him in a while. This dude, I had his number, but I haven't even spoke to him, heard from him in a while. He sent me a random text, "Give your life to Jesus Christ." I'm like, what? All this stuff is happening in the span of three weeks. Because God is saying, yeah. give your life so to my son. So I was connecting the dots. So that's why when I went to church the first week, you're right. I was battling. I was just battling because I was battling with the world and God. I don't want to give this up. Yeah, I didn't want to give this. Yeah. Yeah. So I left the first week. So the second week I went there again. I said, okay, okay, God, I know. This is a word. I know you want me to do something, but I, I'm still trying to figure things out. Again, brother, as he always does with the Holy Spirit, preached a dynamic, powerful word. And then I was like moved by it. And I felt the need to go up that second week. And I just didn't. Because now that's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It pushing you. Yeah. Let me say, because we get the Holy Spirit in baptism. That's your spirit. Right. Because your spirit is saying... Okay, since you in the flesh, let me take over. Right, Because right. I'm ready to be with my dad. Right, right, right. And Willie said something so powerful in the sermon. He said the reason God didn't allow Moses to see his face is because of the spirit that's in him. Mm. That spirit longs for God. So right. if God would have showed Moses the, his face, the spirit would have left him and went back to God. Mm. Right? Wow. So your spirit is longing for God mm. at this time. Right. And your flesh is saying, no, nah, we can't do it. But the spirit is saying, we got to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I want people to understand too, you know, I dealt with even alcoholism, alcoholism, fornication, just cussing up a storm, just negative thoughts. All this stuff All is going flesh. on with me. Yeah. So, so, I, I'm like I said, like you said, I'm battling. Like in my mind, I'm saying, okay, if I give my life to the Lord, that mean I gotta give all that stuff up. Cause you know how, how some people say, oh, I gotta wait till I get 100. That's why I always tell them, nah, dude, don't you will never be 100. You right? will never be 100. So that's what happened. I'm battling. So the second week, I'm like, I heard a word, powerful word, by the way. I went home. I'm like, I'm like, man. And then boom, I run into. I ran into one of our dear brothers. He like, um, well, prior to that, prior to that, I ran into my dear brother because, like I said, all this stuff was happening in the span of weeks. And he like, man, they what you up to? I said, man, I'm into the Lord. So God was connecting me with people that was following, like trying to follow Him. And I had other friends that bashed me, say, man, Nick losing his mind. And other friends was like, man, leave Nick alone. He doing the right thing. So I'm even battling with within in my own community. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, I used to hang around with these dudes. But think about it. Satan never wants to lose some because what people don't realize, eternal damnation was never created for us. It was created for the enemy and the angels that followed the enemy. Mm -hmm. the, the, the thing with Satan is I want to take as many of you with me as possible just so I could throw it in God's face, mm. right? Because if we don't obey God, where do we end up? Mm. In eternal damnation. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, he's going to send his agents to tell you, you crazy and you oh, out of yeah. your mind and you this and you that. What does it do? It places doubt. Because again, Satan doesn't have access to your mind. Right. He needs people to plant seeds. To, so now you can start, should I do this? Yep. Should I? God, I know you showed me. But I have to let all of this go. And it's like God said yes. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you what really got me, though. So week two, like I said, Brother Daniels, God using Brother Daniels in a powerful way. Brother Daniels at the end, you know, saying, you know, you got to hear, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized for remission of your sins. And yeah, I'm going to tell you when it clicked, when it actually clicked. So the third week I'm going to worship. I'm going to worship and and I'm driving and it started raining mm. and I'm like, wait a minute. So God, it's raining. You want me to get wet? Mm. That's when it clicked. 
all this time I'm hearing, I'm hearing this here, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized for remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I'm hearing all of this stuff, but it's like God personally came within my spirit and spoke to me. You need to get baptized. You need to get baptized. Here's some rain as a sign. Because this is the only way. Lord, you, give me a yeah, sign. This, <laughs> this is the only way my servant, this is the only way you're going to understand. So I'm driving in a hot car. I, I drove the bucket. It was mm-hmm. a bucket. No Love. AC. It got you where you need yeah. to go. Yeah. I'm driving, I'm driving to church and it's raining. I said, ah, God, you want me to get baptized. So after the, after the, um, you know, preach a powerful word, bread dancer says somebody here need to get, you know, they need to get saved. I still remember the brother that prayed, you know, they did prayer, opening prayer. And then towards the end, I reached out to one of the seniors, one of the leaders there. I said, I'm ready to give my life to the Lord. Amen. 